Mr. Speaker, thank you. And uh, I have uh, four questions to clarify uh, for the DPM. Um, I'm very perturbed by his saying that I'm not contributing to this parliament. I don't take umbrage because I aim to be a, I aim to be a gentleman, but I'm seriously perturbed. I think I, what I'm trying to do here is to complete the picture because I think maybe because of the uh, various commitment of government, some of the information that's coming out of this parliament is not complete. Let me ask three, four questions to complete the picture. One, I asked the DPM, do you agree that this year fiscal resources amount to $128 billion? We don't care how you classify the resources into revenues, but you have $128 billion. $39 billion of NIR, $12 billion of land sales, and $77 billion of taxes. Two, while you refuse to announce the accurate figure for the reserves, but the government published government financial statements every year, and as of March 2020, the total financial assets reported on the financial statement was $1.35 trillion. Please confirm that. Three, you provided some figures to say that the middle class Singaporeans are getting more from the government than the taxes they pay. One question I want to ask you is, why don't you go to your constituency and tell the constituents that please pay more taxes, you will get more from the government? Okay, have you taken into consideration all the indirect taxes when you talk, when you presented your conclusion? Okay. And fourth, for all the expenditures that the government is trying to incur, are you prepared to give a 20-year forecast of all the expenditures that are going to come? It is a very serious matter, you know. If we have that much resources, we have almost have 7 to 8% of our GDP, okay, including uh, when you take into consideration the land sales and the NIR we have. Every year we have about 7 to 8% of our GDP in this sort of resources. And you tell me that going forward, our expenditures will still be more than this. Then we have to look at our expenditures very carefully. Those are the four questions. DPM, please. Uh, let me ask that you do not put words into my mouth. I did not say that you are not contributing to this parliament. I said that please be rigorous when you come to parliament and justify your position. Right? Now, you asked for specific questions, so you should not be perturbed, nor should you take umbrage. First, on your question about you know, the, you quoted the figure of $128 billion and you quoted $38 billion of NIRC and $12 billion of land sales. Again, I said in this parliament, over and over again, please read the Hansard, that land sale proceeds are not to be used for recurrent spending. We have a reserve protection framework where land sales go into past reserves. Past reserves are then invested and we have an elected presidency to uh, ensure that the reserve protection framework is working as it should, right? working properly. And as for NIRC, again, we do not, I've said it before, that we only take up to 50% of the NIRC, and we are already doing that. Right? It now constitutes 3% of GDP of our expenditure, huge amount, more than any single category of taxes, whether it's GST, personal income tax, or corporate income taxes. And we are only using 50% because it is our responsibility to put back the 50% for future generations so that as our needs grow. Now, if our parliamentarians have taken the approach that you have advocated, we will not even be debating this because I'll just be, we'll just be talking about how much debt to issue in order to fund. And my 
numbers which I've quoted on the, how the OECD, many of the OECD countries, the average is 80% right, of the debt to GDP and how that has increased further. So please look at your figures carefully. And second, you asked me to conserve, confirm whether reserves in a gross financial statement are correct. Well, the statements are prepared and are correct when we publish it. But whether this can be spent is a separate matter. Now, third, you said, the third question is, I made the claim that, uh, you know, go, ask me to go to my constituents and make the claim that the more taxes you pay, the more benefit you get. I don't know your logic because I didn't in any way say that the more taxes you pay, the more benefits you get. And you also asked specifically about indirect taxes. Again, in the, since you entered parliament in the various budget debates, you have been raising this. I've been answering as patiently as I can. <sighs> I hope that this will be the last time that I will answer this. That you have to, you cannot see GST in isolation. You have to see GST in the context of the entire expenditure on our households and on the what taxes they pay and what rebates that they get. And again, all my numbers, I stand by all the numbers I have used in my past parliamentary speeches. So please do your homework and check it out. And finally, you ask me, am I prepared to prepare a 20-year uh, expenditure forecast of all that is to come? I am not because just two years ago, I would not have predicted that we would have faced such a generational crisis that I had to go to the president to touch our past reserve, to unlock our past reserves for it to be used. And $53.7 billion is not a small sum. Okay? So any projection that anybody claim to have the foresight to project 20 years, I'll say, better don't trust that person. You know? Even five years, I cannot tell you what exactly will happen. But for recurrent expenditure, we can project. We can project how much our healthcare costs will be going up because it is our responsibility to provide for that. We know globally what's the trend of how aging affects healthcare costs. And we, what we don't know is what new treatments will come out, how lifespan will continue to grow, what kind of new drugs, new treatments, approaches will come, and therefore how healthcare expenditure will rise. So even whatever numbers that Minister Gan Kim Yong and I have been working, we are always conscious that this represents, in a way, a lower limit, that we have to provide at least for that amount, which is why I have argued that we need to raise the GST from 7 to 9 percent. So, so please think about it carefully. And for you to argue that we are 7 to 8 percent of GDP equals NRRC equals to land sales, your numbers are just completely off. So I hope that you take your parliamentary duty seriously and that you do your homework before you come and debate us on the numbers. Um, Mr. Mr. Leong, I've not called you yet. Sorry, I have to interject because there was a lot of uh, allegations. Mr. Leong, yes. wait till I call you. Mr. Leong, why? If you have fresh insights, please, thank you. I just called you, you can respond. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay, I, I'm also speechless. Okay, all the numbers that I'm saying are backed by research. Okay, so what the DPM has said just now, can I confirm again, that you agree. First, we have $128 billion of fiscal resources this year, but you define and you classify some of it into revenue, some not into revenue. So the government is doing that class, different classification from what we see as total resources available. Okay, so that I, I take Mr. it. Leon, can I suggest we cover new grounds? I think whatever DPM has explained, he has explained. If you are holding to your position, you are free to do so. But if you can have new insights, 
We can move on. No, Mr. Cannot Speaker. Repeat the same ground, Mr. Please. Speaker, that is very important. You know what DPM is saying is whatever he say is facts. Whatever we present as an alternative view is something that can be brushed off. And I have to go back and do more homework and be more rigorous. That is, I don't want to take offense, something that I take, I think that's not professional. So you will have a position you to disagree with DPM and we can recognize that. Okay, okay. Right? Yes. So do you have new insights that you'd like to share with us in parliament? Okay. Apart from then going the, over the same ground. Uh, DPM just now uh, said that he could provide the recurring uh, expenditures that's expected over the next uh, te 10 to 20 years. If I may request that he provide us with that so that we can scrutinize. Mr. Leong, he replied as to how he wants to approach that. There's no point repeating the same question because you get the same answer. But we are, I'm asking for a commitment. EPM has replied and said he's not able to provide you the projection for the next 20 years because it's hard to project what the future will be. But he did say that the recurrent expenditures are possible. But the, you know, some expenditures, like the COVID expenditure, there, of course, it's not predictable. But some are, 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 are possible. So I'm requesting whether he can provide those that are possible. Okay, so that's all, uh, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much for my indulgence. Thank you for allowing me. Thank you. Would DPM like to respond to any of that? Let me, uh, let me set on record what I said. Eh? And uh, I hope that you were not insinuating that I was non-professional in my approach. Because if you were that were so, I'm completely speechless. Now, when you asked whether I could provide projections for the next 20 years, and I want that it is not possible to project over such a long term because there will always be contingent events like COVID-19. And we had, we had gone through global financial crisis, Asian financial crisis, SARS. You know, so crisis is a recurring feature of our life today. And for us to pretend that we have the foresight to see clearly what will happen in the future is just not right. What we can do to the best of our ability is to look at structural drivers that will drive certain expenditure, such as healthcare. And as I said, even then, in my very many meetings with Minister Gan Kim Yong, our health minister, we had gone through our projections over and over again, and the numbers keep changing because of the factors that I mentioned in my speech earlier. So I hope that you listen carefully and not just look into your phone, please. I'm speaking and you're just looking into your phone. You know, I hope that you have the courtesy to at least listen when, I'm, when I am uh, trying so hard to address you, even though I'm not obliged to stand up and answer. Mr. Leong, yeah. if you like, DPM finish. Can you let me continue? Yeah. Now, let me also want to make the important point of so why I had to stand up to say this. It is not my classification or the ministry's finance classification you know, that this constitutes revenue available for spending, this does not. We follow international standards. And this has been agreed, it follows the international standards set out by the IMF, and the IMF provides for a range of uh, ways in which certain expenditures can be counted or not counted, because the structures of governments in different countries are different. Some countries have different layers of government. They have state, they have, they have national, they have state government, they have city government. And what constitute public spending will have to all have to be aggregated properly in order to make useful comparison. And in Singapore's case, we have made it very clear, including during our IMF uh, four consultations, uh, that we abide by these standards. We've always taken the same standards and reported our numbers consistently as to what it can spend and what it cannot spend. So please do not confuse the public that the government arbitrarily decides on what can be spent and what cannot be spent. This is a very serious allegation, which I hope you take back. Mr. Leo Man Wai.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, DPM, I'd like to clar clarify again. I don't think the definition of NIR, uh, uh, the NIRC, all these are uh, uh, IMF definitions, you know. Can you, can you provide documentary proof on that? Of course they are, Mr. Leong, of course they are not IMF definition. Because which country in the world has NIRC? Okay. Tell me. Okay. Then inside the uh, budget and the financial uh, statements, there is a, 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 a table about total receipts and total, uh, about total receipts. And the total receipts inside there includes what uh, uh, we call cash flow. Okay. So if you use the cash flow, the, the budget deficit will also not be so big. So again, you are defining... No, Mr. Leong, I, I do not want to waste members' time on this. Uh, let me first say that uh, it is, it is, the IMF does not stipulate that, you know, what is NRC, what constitutes NRC, etc. It has a set yeah. of clear principles as to what will constitute proper spending, right? And what can be counted, what cannot be counted, and so on. And because we are in a net asset position, we're not in a net debt position, debt servicing costs and so on. As I said in my speech, instead of us using current revenue to pay for debt servicing incurred by earlier generations, we have been in an extremely fortunate situation that we inherited that legacy, that reserves from our forefathers. And I hope that every one of us in this house and in Singapore will abide by that principle will understand that the need for us to remain prudent, that we are a tiny red dot with no natural resources and for which you are subject to the vagaries of the global economy. So we are an extremely open economy as well. So I will just end there because if you have any further question, you can file a PQ and we will answer you. <laughs>